Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. In this one we're making this result which looks complicated but it's actually so few nodes it's surprisingly simple uh, as you can see here nothing too crazy uh, to get this result. So I'll show you how to make that in a second but first this video is sponsored by Squarespace more about them at the end of the tutorial which is going to be a fast one. So uh, let's talk about how to make the spiral thing. It's all geometry nodes. So what you're going to do is go to GeoNodes, take the cube, make it a GeoNodes thing. It always starts the same way, doesn't it? But it always ends differently, so stay along for the ride. Uh, delete the uh, group input, and what we are going to do is we are going to make a bunch of spirals. And you might think, how do we do that? Well, we start with one spiral, and then we make more, you know? Uh, so starting off with a spiral, uh, we're just going to add in there is a spiral primitive. Uh, you can make this yourself like some kind of crazy man or just use this. I'm going to set it to be a height of zero since this is going to be kind of like a two dimensional effect. And uh, we can control stuff like the uh, start uh, radius. So in other words, do you want it to like start from the center or not? That's up to you. And the number of rotations. I like to go for three, but pick something that you like the look of. Now that we have one spiral, we want to make more. So how do we do that? Uh, well, I want them to be in a circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use either a mesh or a curved circle. It doesn't really matter. I don't know which is less computationally expensive. So maybe that's like the one thing. But we are going to instance on the circle. So on every point of the circle, we are going to instance a spiral. And you can see that's chaos. Uh, and that's because the spirals are too big. So I'm just going to bring down the scale. And also, this kind of looks like... You, you ever see Avatar Last Airbender? It kind of looks like a water bending kind of thing going on here. Either way, reduce the number of these that you have, increase the scale, lower the radius. I'm just kind of playing around until I get the look that I like. Something like that. So they're touching just barely. I mean, there's a bit of a gap in between. Uh, so we have spirals. Now, to make it look super cool, I want them to like grow and contract. Not grow. I want them to contract and... Uh, spin and all these kinds of things and we can do that so first of all i want my spiral to spin so why not transform the spiral so if we rotate on the z it's going to rotate all of them and already we have a hypnotic thing so again we have one spiral i'm rotating it and then i'm copying it which makes it so that they all rotate when i uh, rotate on the z axis so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a function relative to the z axis because that's the rotation we want relative to time and there we go. We can also control the speed of this, by the way. I do happen to like the normal speed, but you could divide by uh, 0.1 to make it super fast. And that that's kind of cool in itself, super hypnotic. Um, or you could go the other way, up to you. I'm gonna go with 0.25. So it's fast, but not too fast. And we want the thing itself uh, to be spinning. So we could do the same thing again. We can transform at the end by this uh, combine XYZ. This one's a bit too fast, so let's uh, make a custom one. So I'm just making the rotation slower for this version, but it's still going to be on the z-axis, and I'm going to set it to like 2. And again, you can, you can pick how fast, how slow you want this to be. I kind of like the fast spirals, but the slow overall rotation, I think, gives it a good look. Okay. Uh, now the final thing to do, really, is to give this thing kind of geometry, because if we go to render mode, you can't see anything, right? It's just a bunch of curves. I want to give this geometry and I want to do some kind of contraction thing going on here. So uh, to make this super simple, uh, what we can do is we can, first of all, go curve. Because remember, this thing is a bunch of instanced curves. So we can go curve. I got a text message. Hopefully that didn't come through in the audio. I don't know. Uh, we go curve to mesh. Long story short, what's our profile curve? Another curve circle. So now you can see we have a bunch of snails. Uh, make the size smaller so that they're not touching. I think that looks pretty good. And then finally, uh, the trick to make them contract and expand and all this. If you don't know what I mean, here's what I mean. Uh, we use a trim curve, which you can see uh, does this kind of thing. But it does them. Basically, this trim curve is acting on an instance. So it kind of happens all at once. So in other words, it's as if I put the node here. So we're trimming our spiral, but it does it to all of them instead of like to some of them and not others. Uh, to do that, we want to take our instances and turn them into one big curve. So realize instances, uh, which side effect is you got to make the uh, things smaller again. So I'm going to give them a radius of 0.015. And now when we trim, oh, 
well, <laughs> that, that, that did not seem to do much. Well, <laughs> forget what I said there. Uh, what we can do to make these vary uh, in terms of where they get trimmed, I think the issue is they all have the same indexing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little function. Don't worry, we'll recover this. We're going to use a sign function relative to time. So, and remember, sign goes up and down. So now you can see this contracts and comes back. Uh, at some point, this is at a negative because uh, sign goes from negative 1 to 1. I'm going to map range negative 1 to 1 to 0 to 1. So now this goes all the way in and then all the way out. There's no negative. And then to do an offset, cool trick here, all we have to do is we have to add a bit of an offset by the index. And now you can see they're not all being trimmed at the same time and it looks much cooler. Um, and to get a bit more, I mean, this is it really, but to get a bit more complexity, uh, what you can do is you can make a duplicate, scale it down, rotate it, and uh, let's actually make a group input for the number of copies. Remember, initially we instance on a circle. Uh, I'm gonna make this version have fewer. And then we could add one more in the middle with only one, or I guess it limits us at three. Something like that. Um, and that's generally how I made the result. And this is actual geometry that you can render, uh, et cetera. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed. If you want the uh, blend file, there's gonna be a link in the description to the Patreon. But now uh, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Let's talk about that. So this video is sponsored by Squarespace. And if you do not know what Squarespace is, it is the best, it is the fastest, most efficient way to make a website. So using templates and just dragging around things, you can make a website without HTML, without any of this coding nonsense. I don't know how to do it. You probably don't know how to do it. Just make a website. Three features you might be interested in when it comes to Squarespace is one, analytics, so you can see who is going to your website, demographic type information, who is your audience, how do you target them, stuff like this. Second feature is, again, this thing is just template-based, so everything is automatically cropped and positioned. You just drag these blocks. That's why it's called square space. You move the spaces, the squares. And thirdly, you can embed social media directly into your website. So if you have a Twitter feed and you don't want to redirect, you want to keep people on your website, you can embed that in directly, which is a feature that I think is super cool. And in general, if you're ready to try out Squarespace, there is a free trial that you can like design your website with. But when you are ready to launch and, you know, go live with your website, uh, use my uh, link in the description to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring and thank you for watching the entire tutorial.